Hello Minecrafters, this is BBM Main, and welcome back to another episode of my Let's Play series. This is episode number one, uh, or the second episode if you start counting from zero. This is uh, second episode, episode number one. And I am working on lighting up the area around these, uh, well at least one corner of my uh, quad witch hut. So I'm busy you know, putting down half slabs, putting down torches, anything I can do to light up the area, going caving, lighting up caves, going crazy. And uh, I've been doing a ton of work. Um, I had to travel for work last week, so I wasn't able to get an episode out. So I want to get an episode um, in the bag, in the can, so to speak. And so uh, we're working here to to get that done. So yeah, so you can see I've done a ton of work. Um, you know, dug out the terrain here, got rid of the water, uh, torched all this up here, put half slabs down here. So, yeah, that was a lot of work. And uh, basically, I'm just trying to eliminate all the areas uh, where things can spawn around the switch hut. So, but that's not our project for today. That's just what I've been working on. And let's head up. Our base is way up there. I'm going to head inside and I'll meet you up there. See you soon. All right, so I'm heading over to the uh, rabbit cooker and you see in my hand I've got some uh, cooked steak. So I haven't quite got this uh, rabbit cooker working fast enough yet to uh, provide for all my food needs. So I've had to supplement uh, with some beef and uh, that's what I want to fix this episode. So here we are. Oh, we've got lots of rabbits in there. And uh, we can just hit the button here and uh, cook them. And I think uh, what I want to do is, uh, first of all, I don't want to have just the uh, cooked rabbit, but I also want to have access to um, rabbit stew. And so in order to get rabbit stew, we need a bunch of different things. We need potatoes, we need carrots, we need wooden bowls, we need mushrooms. And uh, somehow we have to breed the rabbits too. If we're using the carrots for the machine, I think uh, what we'll need is dandelions um, to breed them. So over here, I've uh, cleared out this area and uh, I'm going to build a dandelion farm right here. So I think that's going to be our first uh, exercise. Uh, well, before that, I want to go and get this potato down somewhere and start farming that. Let me just check what I have here. So I'm going to head over to the main base, uh, which is not too far away, just over here in this other hill. Let me get out of this rock area. Um, just down there, I've got a little farm, temporary farm. And uh, so I'm going to get these potatoes going and get some of those. And then I will grab the materials to build our um, dandelion farm. And uh, I will see you back up there with all those materials. So see you soon. Okay, we're back. I've got all our materials and or almost all the materials and I think we're pretty much ready to go. I did have to take a little trip to the nether and uh, these are the resources that I was able to gather in the nether. I was lucky enough to get one wither skull. I think I was there for about two hours um, kind of exploring a couple fortresses. There's two fortresses nearby from uh, another portal that I put just outside the door here. And I, I, I went through those uh, fortresses and this is kind of what I gathered. So I think we have, uh, we got some soul sand, which we needed and uh, glowstone, which we're going to need for lamps. And of course, nether quartz, which we're going to need for these daylight sensors. So I'm going to build some daylight sensors, uh, which we're going to use for our dandelion farm. And then I'm going to bring the materials over there and I will see you right there. Okay, we're back. And I believe we have all the materials in this chest to build the dandelion farm. And I even made some uh, banners here. So had to take a run to a desert to get some green dye, cactus, to make green dye. 
but I think we're all set. So I'm going to lay down the building here and uh, put down the control mechanism. I'll show you how it works. See you in a moment. Okay, here we go. So I have the machine working and all decorated nicely. Let's take a look at how the um, wiring works. All right, so I have a switch up here to turn on and off the machine, which sends the signal down there. And I have a daylight timer over here. So only if the day, only if it's daytime, will this piston here be extended to allow the signal to pass through for the switch. And I did it this way also because when it's nighttime and then it turns to day, I want it to trigger the signal again. So, you know, this will be retracted, it'll extend, and presumably this will be on, and that will start our signal again. So um, the signal will come through here, it goes to a monostable, which I changed to a two tick pulse. And that immediately goes to the dispenser, which dispenses our bone meal. And it also goes up here on a two tick delay to turn on the water. Then the signal goes over here. I've got uh, three repeaters here with full delay and one repeater up here, and that will turn off the water. And then the signal will go on this delay over here to repeat the whole circuit. Now, only if the switch is on will this piston be extended and the daylight, it's daylight, uh, will that piston be extended? So only in that situation will the signal repeat. And there we go. We've got our hoppers on this side here going down this side of the chest and on this side going down that side of the chest. That way I can fill the chest double speed, although I don't think that's strictly needed. You don't create that many items that you need a double speed chest but uh, I just did that for fun and here we go we turn on the machine oh all right well we're gonna have to wait for daytime and then we'll turn on the machine I will see you when the sun comes up okay good morning all right daytime so let's uh, test out the machine so there we go and it's on repeat and the flowers are eventually getting pushed to the half slabs here which are on top of hoppers so it looks like it's working pretty good all right I'm very happy with that that looks nice okay I'm gonna let this run for a little bit and collect all the dandelions we need those to breed the rabbits 
and we will be right back. Okay, I've let the machine run for a bit, and let's uh, see what we got. All right, here we have, uh, there we go, our first uh, double chest is filling up. And oh, we're getting a little bone meal, so we'll let that run for a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, so the machine's working like a charm. All right, so the next thing I want to do this episode is, again, uh, we want to get rabbit stew. And so for rabbit stew, we need rabbits, of course, and the dandelion machine is going to help us breed those rabbits. Uh, we also need carrots, potatoes, and mushrooms and wooden bowls, right? So I've got my carrots and potatoes growing down there in a little temporary farm. But I do need to create a mushroom farm. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get some pod soil. Pod soil will allow us to plant mushrooms in uh, full sunlight. And so while I'm building my little mushroom farm, um, there's going to be light and whatnot. And I think it would just be easier if I use pod soil. So to get pod soil, I'm going to need to go find a mega taiga biome. I think that's the only place it grows. So I've kind of taken a look at the map and there is a mega taiga um, about 10,000 meters away, 10 kilometers, pretty far. So I'm going to go and let's see here. I'm going to go and create a pick at my skeleton farm. I have a skeleton farm which I use to generate all of that bone meal. And in that skeleton farm, uh, I can also get XP and I've got a little uh, enchanting set up. And so I'm going to head over there and I'm going to make um, like an unbreaking efficiency two pick or something like that so that I can move through the nether really quickly. And uh, it's about, you know, a little over a kilometer if I go through the nether. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm heading over here to my skeleton farm, so to speak. Skeleton spawner with a little um, farm set up. And I'm going to create my pick. And then I will see you after I journey through the nether at the mega taiga biome. So we'll see you soon. All righty, guys. So here we are. I'm in the um, Podzol uh, biome or the Mega Taiga biome. It's uh, sunset here, and I've uh, I've collected three stacks, four stacks of uh, Podzol. So hopefully that's enough for now. That's you know, like I said, ten kilometers away. So it's uh, it's almost a kilometer just through the Nether. And I uh, went through one of my picks and did uh, a fair bit of damage, about uh, one third of the way through my other picks. So um, I did create a, a new efficiency four on breaking three was the first thing that came up on the enchanting table. So I just said, okay, I'll go ahead and take that. It's way overkill for the nether, of course, but um, it worked out. And so, yeah, I just wanted to show you the, uh, the view from up here in the amplified mega taiga biome it's uh, pretty cool the snow's not falling on me because i'm under this floating platform here which is uh, pretty neat and uh, yeah i'm gonna head back to the base with our pod soul and we're gonna be all set to make the uh, mushroom farm see you soon all right here we are in a creative world uh, it's the same world. I just copied it to my uh, local clients so that uh, we could open it in creative. And what I'm thinking is that's the flower farm up there that we were working on. I'm thinking that this section here is fairly excavated. I need uh, a pretty tall and wide area to put the mushroom farm here. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to use this um, this, I don't know what you would call it, kind of cave, I guess, on the side of the hill here. And we will go right down to ground level and right up to there. And uh, that is going to be our mushroom farm. 
Uh, so I might put start with the control mechanisms down there at uh, ground level and uh, you know do a redstone tower or something up and right here we will put the uh, the platform so let's check the height here so yeah that's about uh, 160 if we start at 64 so we would get about 100 that would be quite a quite a few platforms so yeah let's do that we'll go back to the my server and we'll excavate this part out and we'll start there I will see you soon all right I've cleared out the area and I think we're ready to go so um, what I'm going to do is I, I'm not sure how far down this machine is going to go uh, I'm going to build up a little bit here and get the roof situated and cleaned up nicely and then we're going to build downward and so let's I'm going to grab my materials hop up there get a ceiling going and I will see you soon all right guys so as dawn rises over the hills I'm uh, standing out here uh, in the valley looking at uh, the mushroom farm or at least the top two levels and I think it looks pretty good I expanded it slightly one block on either side because uh, I realized that the mushrooms could spawn a little further than I thought but that uh, looks pretty good so let's head up there I've got this ladder will go away of course it's just on the side for now but let's go up there and check out the farm and I'll show you how it works okay we're up top on the top level and I have my seed platform here with the mushrooms and one of the pads that goes with it and let me show you how the machine works I'm just gonna correct something right here so we don't need this I was just testing that see if that would be better but it's not there we go. put this back all right so the way this works is mushrooms can grow uh, find an initial spot to grow within two blocks left and right north south and one block up and down so they can grow at the level where the mushroom is right now this level down here or one level above so we're going to put another spawning pad at this uh, this open level and that is going to be all the space that the mushrooms can grow now those are the initial spaces but when they pick an initial space they can go one block further and so even this third block here and one in this next row when we put it in will be okay now we use three of each type we're trying to maximize our seed mushrooms each mushroom has a chance of growing other mushrooms nearby and up to five mushrooms in an area so this will allow me to grow two mushrooms of each type on each uh, double spawning pad and we're going to have multiple double spawning pads now the dispensers you see here and all this wiring in the back controls the water so let me show you how this works so it is too big for just even a dispenser back here well if i just had dispensers at the back we could maybe make it work we could put hoppers in the front here or something but uh, what would happen is mushrooms would get stuck behind these uh, dirt wall so what i'm trying to do is create a mechanism here where the water will flow and the mushrooms will flow down to here they won't quite reach the end where we're going to have our collection area so we're going to have another set of hot, uh, dispensers uh, triggered on a delay to push the mushrooms further so let's um, just plop down some mushrooms here as a test and obviously only two of each type would grow but just for this test we're going to uh, put down a bunch of mushrooms and I'm putting them all back here because this is the hardest part so any mushrooms that grow back here need to go the furthest so let's see if they get stuck anywhere all right so we'll check out the wiring here now i have uh this circuitry down here will go down on the ground floor but for now it's a test and what we're going to do to bring the signal up to each floor is use these uh, redstone torch towers so i'm going to use redstone torch towers here and on either side and that's going to control all of the dispensers so uh, right now we have our button that's this would be on a timer but for now we have a button just to test monostable circuit with a three tick pulse coming out of it 
which initially goes directly to the redstone tower here and will trigger these two dispensers. The signal then goes to this long delay here. So I was fooling around with how long the delay had to be and it looks like two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 12 repeater uh, plus this one. Uh, so a 13 repeater delay for the dispensers on the side. So let's trigger this. And you see the initial signal goes and the repeater's going. We got our water. It pushes all the mushrooms down. Then the second dispenser fires. And eventually on another delay, the water will turn off. And if we go over here, all our mushrooms will be in the hoppers or collection area right here. So there we go. That's how the mechanism works. It's working great. I'm going to put in the second spawning pad here and I will show you what that looks like and we'll be right back. Okay, we're done. So this turned out to be an enormous build. I thought, oh, episode one, I'll, um, you know, we'll make some rabbit stew. We'll uh, get a little carrot farm going, a little uh, potato farm going. We'll build a mushroom farm and uh, some dandelions. And uh, that'll all be super, super easy. And uh, we can whip this together really quick. And then, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of work. But as you can see, the, uh, the build is pretty enormous. And... Um, you have to because uh, mushrooms grow really slowly and if you want them to um, if you want to farm them with any speed you uh, need something like this I will probably double the size of that uh, mushroom farm at some point but it's what we have now and I have to say that used up a huge ton of resources so yeah it's uh, it's gonna have to do for now. All right, let me uh, get down there. My platform now is too high because I dropped the building down. But uh, let me just jump down here and I'll show you what we have. And uh, let me um, grab those materials there. I don't wanna lose those. All right. Okay, we'll go inside. So. I have our um, hopper collection system now with uh, chests and you can see that the uh, mushrooms are start have started to build up. And uh, what we have here is a, a hopper timer and I have it full um, to give a, a nice long delay. And what happens is when it, when it does trigger, it will push a signal through the monostable circuit here and I'll get a four tick pulse out of that and uh, the signal will go this way. Now, initially, this is a little complex, but just follow for a second. The signal comes down, and initially it just triggers the water at the back, and then it goes down this way. And then it also triggers this. So the signal comes in, and then it, it also goes down this way. This is the delay to turn off the water, and so that's 12 ticks. So Boom, that fires 12 ticks later. It's going to turn off the water. In the meantime, the signal's going this way, which is on a um, 12 tick pulse plus one repeater on either side, so 13 ticks. Uh, that will turn on the other water. So right about when this water turns off, this one turns on. And then, you know, that, that delay signal is going to go through there again, and that'll turn off that. So... Maybe the whole mechanism works here. Uh, let me see if I can climb up here and we can catch the uh, water going off. I'm just going to, we had a mushroom there, I think. Where was it? I saw a mushroom right there. You can just barely see it. Um, so I'm just going to hold here and I will cut to the point where the water comes on so you can see. And then, um, and then we'll talk soon. All right, there you go. So you got a little taste of how the machine works and saw the mechanism in action. We've got our crazy circuitry down here all working. Everything's humming like a charm. 
it's just um, it's a mushroom farm. It's slow, and um, that's the way it is. So if, hopefully soon, uh, this farm will service all of our uh, rabbit stew needs. Uh, right now, it's going to take a little while to get going, but um, you know this will uh, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon, and if it doesn't, well, you know what? We'll double the size of it. That's what we'll do. All right, this is uh, this is a lot of fun. It took a long time to make this episode, but uh, it was a lot of fun. It's a huge build. I didn't anticipate that, but that's uh, that's cool. And uh, I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. That uh, just uh, really lets me know that you guys are enjoying it. And uh, if you got something to say, by all means, hit the comment button and uh, let me know. Um, right now. It would be great to hear some ideas on uh, what we should be building in this world. Uh, pretty fresh world, so I'm open to suggestions. And I look forward to hearing from you. So until next time, goodbye.